the last time I was hanging around this bit of forest looking for fungi, I took these photos. And some of you asked me for the technical process breakdown. Seeing as I have found a subject or two, let's do just that. Also, look at the mushroom just growing off this tree. <laughs> Amazing. Let's run through the gear that I'm using in this video very quickly. Today we are using the Nikon D850 and I'm going to use a Lauer 100mm f2.8 2 times magnification macro lens. This is a manual lens so I am going to go through the manual focus stacking process to begin with and I'm going to use a tripod as well for stability. I have two tripods, one for photography and one for filming. This is my main photography tripod, but sometimes I will use my filming tripod depending on the angle that I'm photographing my subject at. This tripod is taller. It also has a multi-angle column, which can be quite useful. My filming tripod is very lightweight. It is essentially a travel tripod, but it has a reversible center column. So when I'm working with really low awkward angles or uneven ground, I find it so much easier to reverse my center column and work upside down. This always looks far more awkward than it actually is. I really don't mind working upside down like that and I just find it so much easier to get at those hard to reach subjects. So I've opted for working upside down for this shot. We are set up, we've got these four fungi here. And actually as I go through the focus ring. They're pretty much on the same level. They're not really staggered that dramatically in front or behind each other. So that should make focus stacking this pretty simple. I'm going to use the LCD screen to focus stack this scene essentially from front to back. And I'm going to use that and not my viewfinder because I find it so much easier to focus more precisely. I can use the Philippi out screen, which is great at this awkward angle, but I also have these magnifying buttons here so I can zoom right in to make sure that I am in focus and that the image is going to be sharp. When working with macro lenses and close-up subjects like this, it's really easy to accidentally cause vibration and shake. So you want to minimize that as much as possible. So I stick my camera on the 10 second timer just so that the lens has time to settle before the shot is taken. You can use something like one of those um, remote shutter triggers. If you have one of those, that, that's also fine. I just don't have one of those with me. Working in live view also automatically locks up my mirror for me so I don't have to do it manually. Again, we're just trying to make sure that we don't get any unwanted shake or vibration. The process is simple. I'm going to move the focus ring, make sure that I'm actually in focus using live view, and take the photo. Then I'm going to rinse and repeat until I'm focused from front to back. Depending on how many images I need to take in order to get clarity from front to back in a scene, an image like this, I could be sat here for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and up to an hour in order to get all the shots that I need. It is a slow and long process. And if you're working with changing lights, which I currently am, you need to be able to work as fast as possible so that your exposure is even throughout all of your images so that they stack together beautifully in post-processing. So why focus stacking? And why so many shots? Focus stacking is an option, by the way. You don't have to have your subject in focus from front to back if you don't want to. I love capturing all of the textures in these kinds of subjects, so I really enjoy doing it. But it could be interesting to experiment with taking one shot or five shots instead of 20, 30, 45. When you're photographing subjects that are extremely small like this and you're using a macro lens to get very, very close to it, your depth of field is going to be very narrow, at times razor thin. 
it's actually just started to rain. So multiple photos in a stack is going to give you more depth of field and more detail. You can try using a narrow aperture, but of course you're going to need more light. And I personally find that natural light is occasionally hard to come by in the forest. It can get quite dark in here. So how do you know how many photos you need to take? When I'm manually stacking, I just simply take photo after photo until I have clarity from front to back. And it is really surprising sometimes as to how many photos you end up taking. If I use the focus shift shooting option on my D850 with a lens like the Sigma 105mm, I'm going to need to tell the camera how many photos to take, so I do have to estimate how many photos I need beforehand. This could be called focus stacking or focus bracketing on your camera. Now technically, the correct term for what we are doing right now is focus bracketing, <laughs> but many photographers, uh, including myself, tend to use the term focus stacking for the entire process, but focus stacking is actually the editing process term when you take that stack of photos and then smush them into one image. But um, yeah, so I apologize for using the wrong, the wrong term. <laughs> I'm sure there are macro photographers out there whose skin is just itching every time I say focus stacking. They're like, no, it's focus bracketing. <laughs> So the focus shift shooting mode is where the camera will take a number of photos for me, shifting the plane of focus across the frame. You need a lens with autofocus for this and it will keep taking photos until the programmed number of images has been taken or until the lens reaches infinity focus. Now, despite being on autofocus, I will always manually focus the first shot because I want to decide where the stack starts. Usually I will do this a little before the subject and in a case like this I actually want some of this foreground subject, uh, this foreground texture, sorry, the wood to be in focus as well. So we're going to start the stack probably somewhere around here and let it run all the way through down to these fungi and past. So how do I decide how many images I need to take? It's a bit of guesswork and there are a few things that you need to take into account. How close are you to the subject? The closer you are, the more your depth of field decreases, so the more images you're probably going to need to take. I also think about my aperture. How many subjects are there? Is it just one? Is it two? Are they close together? Are they far away? And how much of the scene do I want in focus? I'm overcautious and tend to overestimate, uh, which doesn't hurt because if you take too many photos, all you have to do is delete them. That's the worst that can happen. Or if you don't take enough photos, then the worst that you can happen is that you have to start the stack again and just make micro adjustments. With the focus step width, I don't really know if there is a specific rule for this. From what I know for macro subjects, you want five and under. Maybe if you were doing landscapes, you want to go up more towards 10. If anybody knows if there is a specific rule for this, then please feel free to share in the comment section. That is now taking 50 images for me. It does it in like a minute, maybe even less. Super, super fast. Much faster than manually stacking. <laughs> I think you will agree. Uh, but focus bracketing in general, it's a little tricky. Um, on a day like today, I have to think about the fact that the floor is very wet and soft. So I don't want my tripod to slip or sink while I'm bracketing the light. It's been very on and off um, as it rains and then the sun comes out. That last round of rain has actually made me super cold. <laughs> so I have to make sure that my exposure is consistent throughout all the images. And um, I'm concerned about the first shot that I took because there was definitely a bug making its way around a couple of the funguses and shifting them slightly. So I don't know how well that is gonna stack together. It might be a tricky one. <laughs> Right, let's double check that before we pack up. A few of you have suggested trying out a focus rail. Uh, I've never used one before. I'm a bit concerned about the awkward and low angles I tend to get into <laughs> when I do this. Um, 
and I can't really comment on how that would change the technical process or anything like that. Um, but I'll give it a go sometime if you use one regularly and you have any information to share feel free to pop that down in the comment section it's a, a space of learning and uh, sharing with each other so <laughs> I think that is good so uh, let's go because I am getting cold Well, hopefully that was useful to someone. <laughs> I don't usually do this type of video and sometimes it is difficult to know how much technical detail to put into a video. So if this is something that you want more of, you want more explanation and that side of the process, then do let me know and uh, I will be mindful of that in the future. Otherwise, um, it is a slippery walk back to the car. So uh, onwards. <laughs> Fine, we've got it. Oh no, I've just moved everything. That just keeps my composition. <laughs> I spent so long getting my tripod in position and I think I've just moved that. <laughs> okay, it's totally fine. This could be called focus stacking or photos bra- Photos? Photos? <laughs> photos stacking. This could be called focus stacking or focus bracketing on your camera. 